this is Amy and this is part two of a series about Google Chrome and in this episode we're going to talk about installing a theme into your browser and installing extensions. Now if you don't know what I meant by either one of those don't worry because we're going to go over it all. So the first thing you need to do is open up your Chrome browser and then I want you to make sure that you're logged in. So remember you can do that by going to the hot dogs which are in the top right and then looking to see if you're signed in. Also if you're on the new tab page then you should see your little profile picture in the top right and your name right here. So once you've made sure that you're signed in I want you to click on the apps button. Now the apps button is in the top left hand corner of your browser once in a while I meet somebody who doesn't see that apps button so if you're one of those folks who is not seeing that apps button I want you to take note of this address and I'm gonna put it up on the screen really big for you just in case you don't see it and we'll get that back for you so just in case you're one of those people who doesn't see it here's the address that you're gonna type in so notice what happens if I copy this to my clipboard and then I paste it up there in my Omnibox, I'm going to get to the same place that I do when I click this button. So if you don't see this multicolored button that says apps, when you go to this web address and then you make a bookmark out of this, I'm going to drag and drop it right down here and see what happened to it it turned into that fancy apps button. So that's just a web link. So if you don't see it you can get it back just like that. So when you go here, you might not see as much stuff as I do. I've installed just a few things in this browser. Let me move over for just a second to the real browser that I use every day and you'll see that I've installed pages and pages of stuff into my browser. But what we're going to start with is just installing a theme. So do you see how in this browser window in the background I've got this gray and orange um, and yellow theme. It's pretty awesome. And then when I go over here, it's just kind of white and boring. Well, we're going to install a theme into our browser. So I want you to go into the store that you'll see when you click on that apps button and look all the way at the bottom at themes. And then we're going to look in the either by artist or by Google. And this is also what you want to tell your students to do. You don't want them to go in here and be looking at every single thing in here because eventually you're going to find something that's not appropriate in here. So you tell them you can look at and pick from the by artist or the by Google. But if I look at your screen and you're clicked on themes and you're looking through all of them or you have one that I don't see in these two areas, then you're off task and you shouldn't be there. So, I mean, even this one is we don't pick that one for school, right? We know that that's not school appropriate. So um, let's pick one of these and maybe for your students, from what I'm seeing, we should just stick with the by Google area. But what I want you to do, um, teachers, educators, is choose one of these themes. Now let's say I pick this theme, I click it, I click where it says free to install it and I install it into my browser and then I just really don't like it. So I can see it when I open up a new tab and oh my gosh it's kinda overwhelming. Well no big deal all you have to do is just go and find a different one and install it. So pause this video take a couple of minutes and find a theme that you like and get it installed into your browser and I'll do the same. Alright so I like this one called topography and um, I will tell you guys there's a good reason to install a theme in your browser later on when you have many different um, different accounts logged in if you ever get to that point where you need to do that it's really nice to be able to instantly look at your browser and know which account you're in and the theme will help you do that it'll also help you know whether you're synced or you're not syncing um, if you have that browser theme installed so let's do this. Let's go back to our apps button again and let's go back into the store and this time we're going to install a couple of extensions. Now I'm going to go back to my uh, regular browser window that I use every day that's got all my stuff installed into it and show you what extensions are. So do you see how to the right of my Omnibox over here I've got lots and lots of different extensions installed. These are little programs that run in my browser and they help me do things. So for example, let's say that I've navigated to a website I want to um, I want to share with a group who's with me in a training. And let's say I've gone to um, 
gone to Teaching Channel, which is a great resource, by the way, and I've dug down into Teaching Channel, and I found this great video, and um, I want to share it with the group in the room. I want to give them this URL. Do you see how long this is? I mean, they probably might not be able to type all that in. It'd be kind of a pain. But I can use lots of different URL shorteners. One is the goo.gl URL shortener. I can give it a click, and now this um, site essentially has a six-digit web address. I can share that with my group and they'll be able to get to that web page. This one's bit.ly. I'll be able to do the same with it except here I can actually customize it. So I can actually type in um, what I want them to type in. So let's say let's try to call it lesson goes wrong. That'll be case sensitive and I'll save it. So now the URL if you wanted to get to that page is bit.ly forward slash capital L lesson capital G goes capital W wrong so these are really neat tools up here I have a whole bunch of them they do all kinds of different things so you're gonna wanna be able to install those into your browser also so how you do that is you come into the Chrome Web Store and let's start with the goo.gl URL shortener so what we wanna do is type in some sort of search term up here in the top left and then we want to look under the extensions area so see how this one's labeled apps this one's labeled extensions we're looking for extensions and here it is right here it's actually already added to this account in this browser but what you're gonna do is click the plus free and then you're gonna see it appear over to the right hand side of your Omnibox. Let's look at another thing that you're gonna to have to do with some of these extensions. So let's go back to our teaching channel and find another video and kind of replicate that in this browser. Um, because what's gonna happen is that when you first start using these extensions they're not gonna be authenticated through your account so they're not gonna work like mine just did it's gonna give you an error so I'm gonna add mine back in again so that I can show you what I mean alright so we just added the extension and now when I click it you're gonna see this just like I do and let me try to make it bigger for you here if I can um, so see how it says not added to history. Let me try that again so you can see it. Not added to history. Well, we want to have our short URLs in history in case we need to go back and get them again. So it just also lets us know something's not quite right. So let's do this. Let's click on where it says not added to history and let's authenticate this um, URL shortener. So what I'm going to do is click allow access and now every time I make one of those short URLs it's going to be added to my history. Let's look and see what that does. So when I click through now I can see all the short URLs that I've made before and I can also see if anybody has used them. So that lets me go back into the details and look and see when and if anybody clicked it, what browser they use, what platform they use. Um, I use this when I'm doing staff development face to face because if I told everybody make sure you're using Google Chrome to click this link and I come in here and I see they're using Internet Explorer I know they might they might have a problem with that you know with that site that I directed them to if I know it only works in Chrome. So um, just a little tip there that sometimes you will have to authenticate your extensions. So there are all kinds of stuff in here. I want to point out to you as you go and take a look at all these different extensions that you can go into collections also and you can see what different people from different areas are installing. So let's go down and look in the education area. So you might find all different kinds of apps and extensions. Now in this training we're just talking about extensions not apps so we won't go into this yet but apps just show up in a different place which I guess I ought to go ahead and show you. So this is where apps show up and you know where extensions show up right up here to the top right. So let's go ahead and install a couple more extensions before we leave today. Um, the next one that I want you to look at installing is called Tab Cloud. And this is what the icon looks like right here. And let's go and find it now in the Chrome Web Store. So we're going to go back to our search again. And we're going to type in Tab Cloud. It's all one word actually. And remember we're going to look in the extensions area and we're gonna click on the plus free and add 
and then we're going to see that appear to the right of our Omnibox. Now it gives us the message that we're going to have to log in already. So we're going to click on it and it says TabCloud requires your login. So let's go ahead and click where it says to log in and let's allow that extension. Now I'm going to flip back over to my other browser so I can show you what this does. See how in this browser I've got my Gmail account open, um, I've got my calendar open, I've got my personal Gmail open, I've got my Google Drive open, and I've got this teaching channel tab open. Now let's say that I want to save this set of tabs for later on. I want to come back to all this on a later date or I want to remember what I had open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a tab cloud of them. So when I click on this, I'm able to type in a name for it. So let me put today's date, for example. So today's the 15th of July, and I'll put that in there, and I can put a note to myself, whatever I want to type in there, and let me show you big how that looks. So there are all the little indicators for all the tabs I have open, and now I can click the Save button, and that set of tabs now will go into my list. I like this because not only does it save my tabs as I left them, it also respects when I have pinned tabs and big tabs. So if I go and open up this set of tab clouds, which let me do that, it's going to open up exactly those same ones again. So I'm going to close out my window and then I'll be right back to show you how it works. Alright, so as you can see I closed my browser window and I've opened it back up again and now I'm going to access tab cloud so that you can see what happens. And remember, here's the teaching channel example that I showed you just a minute ago, and now I'm going to click on the green plus button. And what's going to happen is my browser is going to open back up, and you can see all of my tabs that I saved a minute ago loading, and you can see that it also brought up my pin tabs as pinned and my big tab as big. So for me, that's just amazing because I can set all these sets of tabs up before I have a staff development and then I can pull them all up. So I think it would be great for teachers and lots of different types of folks. So that's just a couple of extensions that I really like. There are so, so many.